Good morning on this uh, Friday again. I can hardly believe how quickly these weeks are passing in. And as we travel through the Exodus journey, we come now to this final series of oracles from Balaam. It's a very interesting story and a very interesting aspect of what's going on. And it seems quite unique, taking up three chapters of the Bible. It's therefore quite important. And you ask yourself, what is it that lies behind this that makes it so important? And pondering, thinking, reflecting on this, uh, Genesis 12 seems to be such a crucial part of the Bible where God, having called Abraham, declares to him, as it were, in the outset, what he will do, how he has going to make a covenant with him. He will then bless him and through the nation that will come from him, will be blessed, but he will also curse those that curse him. Sometimes we don't actually see that bit. We tend to see the other bit and miss that. But this is something amazing, I think. And it's interesting, on this day, this is VE Day, uh, a day when people, uh, there's some conversation about celebration and so on and commemoration. I'm not sure. Some of that doesn't sit very well with many Christians, including myself. The war is something that we don't want to remember, I don't think, all the pain and the misery and the evil and so forth. But one thing is clear about it, I think, is that there were many pronouncements made during the war. Obviously, I wasn't there to hear them, but having listened through the history records, we can hear various leaders like Mussolini and Hitler and various others who made great pronouncements of what they would do and why they were there and this Third Reich, this 1,000 reign of the Aryan people and so on. Now, all of these great pronouncements, doesn't really matter who makes them, it doesn't matter how strongly they make them or how broadly they are. Really, what lies behind them is not very much. It's a person declaring something. But here in Genesis 12, God is making a pronouncement in regard not only to his people, but to the nations and the world. And at the very core then of this, this is this passage and these passages, this is what is there. I think Numbers is expanding for us out of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, these already given promises and declarations of God. Conscious also of Genesis 12, 1 to 3, this covenant relationship is a gift of God. Therefore, it is a grace and it will not be earned. Although there are responsibilities in it that reflect the, the nation's response of thankfulness and willingness to enter into it, they never really earn it, never earn it. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, God's people today, those who fully rest in the work of Jesus and not in their own work, are part of a new covenant people, blessed because of the gift of God in Christ, not because we earn it, but because of what Jesus has done for us. And those words in Scripture, if God is for us, who can be against us, seem to come, I think, back to our minds as we read through Numbers 22, 3 and 4. Such is the security that is the, belongs to those who are in Jesus Christ in his covenant. Bilak, of course, that is the king of Moab, dis discovers this, but doesn't seem to actually hear it or listen to it. Do you know, he reminds me of someone in the fairground. You know those times whenever, maybe you did it as a child, well, certainly I did it. I can recall times when, having gone into the, uh, the like the amusements and you know, put my money in the slot machine, I know everybody condemns gambling. It was one of the big things and so on, yes. And there I was, sticking my money into the, into the things, all my pennies, as it most likely was back then, and later on the 2Ps and 5Ps and 10Ps and so forth. When I won the money, you know, I couldn't hold on to it and keep it in my pocket. It all had to go back in again. You know, just, there had to be one more machine. It's nearly, yeah, let's try it one more time. Are you like that? <laughs> let's give it one more spin of the wheel and let's see if we can win it all back. Well, I think that's what you see with, uh, with Balak. After having been clearly told, you're cursed, you're cursed, you're cursed, you know, he says, look, let's try it again. <laughs> it's like, let's try it again. And he eventually doesn't hear it. And then Balaam now, who's got on a bit of a roll, instead of him doing what he's asked to do, he now does what he ought to do. And he does it because of the work of God in his heart. That's not to say that he loves God, 
because God is willing to use any instrument for his purposes if he so chooses. And so in verse 15 of chapter 24, an interesting statement is said, the oracle of Balaam, this is his final oracle, which is now he's no longer doing it because he's been asked to do it. He's now doing it because God is, is putting his spirit on him. That's what we saw in chapter 24 there. The Spirit of God, verse 2, came upon him and he took up his discourse and he said, the Spirit of God is moving this man now. And then in verse 15 he says, the oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the word of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty. Isn't there something has happened now? This man sees now his eyes are opened and God has given him the capacity to see something and that is so crucial isn't it that we need the help of the spirit of God we need our eyes to be opened in order to see clearly and that is the gift that God gives to his children you and I as his children are promised this that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us he will lead us into all truth and as we come to the Bible and we take time to prayerfully consider, we can see the things of God. When we look at the world with the Bible on our other hand, we can understand and we get better capacity to interpret the trials of life, the troubles of life, the claims and the pronouncements that people make around us. So think about the nation of Israel. In the third oracle, great things are said of them. This is the nation that is regarded by God as a lovely the encampments are beautiful. The palm groves stretch far. It's, it's all saying, you're going to win. You're going to win. What an encouragement this must have been to the nation of Israel as they are just on the edge of the great uh, period when they are going to have to go into the promised land, which is a real very big battle. It speaks mightily, I think, of in our, in our understanding of spiritual warfare. We no longer fight people in this way, of course. But what we do is we fight against a spiritual foe, the powers of darkness. And this is a real wonderful encouragement to us. God is with us and God is within us. The final oracle is a little bit like buy one, get two free. Or in this case, buy three, get one free. And that's in verses 15, that's the final and the fourth oracle. After Balak says, look, clear off. You don't, you're not going to get anything from me, you Balaam says, just hold on a minute, I've got a special, this is a free one, as it were. But isn't this the most marvellous one? Because here is the, 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 the man, Balaam, and he is declaring the wonderful truth of the Messiah. In verse 17, he says, a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. And he's talking here, obviously, of the one, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. God's blessings, as these, these uh, words these oracles continue to narrow and narrow. They narrow in to the very person of Jesus. All God's blessings focus on this one. What a wonderful encouragement, isn't it? That the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour, is the one whom the Lord's favour rests upon. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And it really is a wonderful encouragement to us to see that right throughout the whole Bible, the same storyline is there. And when we are part of his covenant people, we are in that storyline. I think just as I finish this morning, a couple of little things strike me. Isn't it so sad that Israel was not, was not a threat to the, any of these nations? Israel was a blessing. That's the bottom line. If they could have seen it, they would have been blessed there. And so, so listen to the words of Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2 uh, says, Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Pay close attention. 
the little phrase here, lest we drift away, the word drift away is best illustrated by a man or a woman, a person on a boat in the river. When rowing against the current, you make progress, even though it might be quite difficult. That actually is how life is like for the Christian in this world. We go against the current of the world, the flesh and the devil every day by rowing, as it were, with the help of the Holy Spirit. We cooperate and we make progress, doing the will of God, trusting and resting in him. But as soon as we stop rowing, what happens? The boat drifts. And it doesn't just drift a little bit. It goes with the full current of the, of, of the water. And that's the picture here. That if we don't pay close attention, we do drift. We seem to go backwards. We don't just simply stop there. And God has given us his word by his spirit to really help us make progress. He has really given us his, his word to strengthen us, encourage us. In, in the things of grace. And so I just want to encourage you to pay attention to that and see in it the incredible blessings and go out today and over this weekend in the knowledge that as one of God's covenant children, if you are, you are so secure. Now, if you're not one of God's children, even though you sing God's songs like Balaam and talk his words, and you've maybe never yet come to the place where you've rested fully, in him. You've never fully acknowledged and surrendered and admitted your own sin and guilt before God and the need of mercy and just embraced with joy Jesus Christ as your Saviour. That I would really encourage you to do. You know, I, I, I'm conscious that many people are listening. So there's nobody around you, just you and the Lord maybe. Surely there's no better time and no better place for you in the quiet of that moment to just stop. And this little recording is over and just take time talk to the Lord tell him your anxious thoughts as well even if you're not sure of it you're coming you're like the man fighting without and fears within but Lord just as I am I come he will know your heart and he will accept you in Christ and I trust you'll know his joy and the liberty that comes as a consequence of that so I just pray you'll be blessed on this day every day is a VE day for Jesus a victory. It's a victory day because we live after the cross. So let's be glad in him more than anything else and rejoice in that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. The Lord be with you. And if you're able, you can join us on the Lord's Day at half ten on our YouTube site.